<laughs> Over the last three days, our campers have competed, created, and collaborated on various projects, events, and challenges. It's been unbelievable watching your children's creativity and camaraderie shine through Mauritia. But what's perhaps most important to us are the educational values and messages that permeate every element of this film. This summer's color work focused on the Am and on the Echad. A person exists as a single entity, separate and distinct from everyone else on the planet. At the same time, no one exists within a vacuum. Everyone is part of a larger group or community. These themes were particularly resonant this summer, coming off a period when the impact of every individual's decision and longing to return into a community both came into sharp focus. As we begin to say goodbye to both Morashia and Morasha 2021, we hope that our campers' experience here at camp also offered both moments of am and opportunities for Echad. On one hand, so much of what we do is to build one large camp family, dancing together, singing together, praying together, and playing together. But simultaneously, our focus remains on each and every individual camper, on building a camper's confidence, skills, and self-esteem. It is our sincere hope that when our campers return home on Thursday, they are leaving with a powerful Am and as a stronger Echad. But before that happens, we have one more thing to do. Let's find out who will win Color War 2021. Welcome to our Morshia finale. Good evening, Camp Morashad. Welcome to the Morashia finale. This is Sally Shotskis, joined by Donnie Rubin hey, and Toby hey. Newberger. Hi, it's great to be here. It's really an honor to be up in the booth tonight, and I'm really excited to see what Morasha has in store for us. All right. Likewise, just I, I uh, missed most of the summer. First time in a while, but um, I can't think of a better way to end off than coming back up. It's Dobie great to have you. Toby came up as a special guest, and Donnie is the master chef at Camp Morasha. So. Two very important people. Someone who gets to come up special and someone who knows everything about this camp, inside and out. Guys, look at the yep. floor. Ben Sion, can you show us the floor for a minute? It's so exciting down there. You can really feel the energy in the room. It's a really good Tuesday. To create this family. What kind of pants is Jeremy wearing? Those look, those look very comfortable. He's going to be here for a long time. Yeah. I feel like they're very stretchy. Do you think this is like a, a, a thought out out outfit for the, uh, the finale? I think for sure. I think that Jeremy always has to dress to be ready for anything. He's going to be here for a long night. We've got an amazing, amazing plan in store for the night. We're going to see lots of projects that the kids have been hard at work on. We're going to hear songs. We're going to see videos. I mean, I, I'm, I think we're showing about 10, 10 different projects ending with the famous Shiria. The sing. What's your um, What's your favorite part? It, yeah, what in, in no in all of uh, in all the Borussia finales you've seen? What's been your favorite? Not necessarily project, but like what's your favorite competition? We'll call it. I have to say, and 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 you can speak more to this, Donnie, but I am really excited about the Chopped Challenge. Can you just tell us what that's all about? So I was actually one of the judges in the Chopped Challenge. It, me and uh, three of the chefs in the kitchen, and Chaviva, who's in charge of the dining room, the special diets, were able to judge it. And I'll say it was really tight, and the kids made really good food. I actually finished one of the dishes completely. For real? Uh, that's uh, for real. Might you think about putting it on the menu for next summer? If I, I don't know if I can uh, recreate it. That's how that's how elaborate it was. It was really really impressive and really delicious. Amazing. And and I'll say back to you, Jeremy. Let's give a big round of applause for Beth Geisler and Ahuva Simulski. And last but certainly not least, the person that makes sure. That if any of us might have to sleep in the infirmary, the health center that we're cared for each and every day and night, let's hear it for Shoshana Dimbor! <laughs> the first Nisi Knows video will be by the... by the yellow... by the yellow FI team. Everybody, please turn your attention to the screen.
about to see the special Nitsi Nose Project. We're going to talk about, well, we have this video showing behind us. Can we what take a look at the floor for a second? Okay, they're looking at a project that the Nitsis put together here. Let, let me tell you something about the Nitsis. The Nitsis have their own island on camp. And it is, I, I actually live close to the Nitsis, so I get to experience their lives. And they run their own camp there. And it is amazing to watch. And also something I've noticed about the Nitsis during Color War, even with the blue and the yellow and the different teams, they really join together nicely and have a really great time about it. Donnie, I heard an interesting stat. You can tell me if it's uh, wrong or not. I heard that on average, on an average summer with an average amount of Nitsis, that just the Nitsi boys finish a more than thirty thousand cheese balls in an average Morosha summer. Is that true? At least. There's also another interesting stat that nobody knows. We lost three Nitsis in the ice machine just yesterday alone. What do you mean we lost? Like, oh, they are in the ice. They're machine. in. They might still be in there. Oh, they're, no. they're in there. That's terrible. Listen, let me tell you, our Nitsi division heads, Richie Morozov and USA Topak really succeed in making these Nitsis feel like they are princes and princesses of this camp. Like they own the camp and they walk around like that and I think it's amazing. It is amazing. There's also there's also a new Nitsi camp mom on the boys' side. And some Razy is her name. She's been incredible all summer. Something that not many people know about Razy is her English name is Rebecca Randy. You can use that if you see her and she will be surprised. What do you mean it's her English name? That's her legal name. And um, I found that out while doing some statistics uh, findings. What other kinds of uh, investigative reporting have you been doing? Well, Rachie Mirzoff, I don't know if you guys know Rachie, but she's a very fun, energetic, um, the, the division head for the Nietzsche girls. And um, she works at Cat Yeshiva High School during the year. Rachie was actually my first camp boss. Really? Yeah, I was, wor I was working in a different camp that we won't talk about, but he, I, was a, uh, I was a counselor for her husband's division. And if you know the Mirzoffs, you know who runs the show. So I was effectively <laughs> working for her. That is definitely how it goes. Also, I don't know if people know this, but she is a avid binge watcher, and she is grandfathered into Netflix's eight screen um, plan. Eight screens. Yes, eight screens. That's what that's what wow. she told me. Yeah. For yeah. real. Yep. True. Well, I can tell you this: she has not shared her screens with the Nietzsche <laughs> <laughs> because we have no devices in Camp Marasha. Oh, that's, that's still that's still how we do it. Policy, that and still I policy. think that is my favorite part of the summer. I couldn't it, agree more. Right. I you also don't have more. screens. We well, don't bring screens to camp. Right. We don't use screens during the day, but we do have to use them for work at times. Right. But having an entire summer, eight weeks of kids not being on screens. I said to my son the other day, how many times have you looked at nature this summer? And you're constantly looking at nature. It's amazing. You actually are paying attention. I think Yellow just wants happen. something. No, they don't announce the scores until later. Oh, maybe their video is coming up. I think they were excited that they saw themselves. Let's take a look at the floor. Yeah, it looks like they're waiting for the next Nitsi Nose project. Ah, they made a video for next year's Nitsi. How thoughtful. My son's going to be a Nitsi next year. Ah, so cute. You know, I had a lot of Nietzsche's in my show this year. Um, I know, my son. Home. My son was in yes. the show. Wait, uh, just because I wasn't here, what what was the show this year? So we did a Disney cabaret with a video wall backdrop. It was really epic. Um, it was very exciting. And the, the largest population in the cast were Nietzsche's. And they played fairies and they played tourists and they played vendors. They were really, really incredible. Um... The show, the show was really incredible. The, the production value was amazing. The storyline was amazing. And we have a surprise cake that our Bay Street team made for you guys. That I was, I did not show Sally yet because it was that awesome that I wanted her to see it live. I cannot live. wait. I cannot wait. Um, Sally, what's in the running for next year's show? Uh, Are you allowed to talk about that? They all ask me that. They all ask me that. And I have no idea. But I do ask them what they would suggest. I was going to say, by the way, about um, the cake. Can I, throw my, can I throw my suggestion in the hat? Yeah, go ahead. I think, I, and it might be a little difficult, but I think given your uh, given your experience and genius, you could adapt it for a Moher Shah version, but Madagascar. That'd be interesting. We had Madagascar as an Olympics team this 
summer. Oh, I was talking about the movie, not the country. No, I know. Let, let me throw this out there also, Sally. I, I might be a pretty big deal in the karaoke world, so if you need something, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Does well, it have to be a musical? Is it always a musical? It's always a musical. Oh. And, and you know that whoever broadcasts with me always ends up in my shows. That so is, that's a scary out. thought. Yeah, watch out. Well, I've, I've already been, I've already been the guest appearance. Right. The, uh, Star guest appearance in one of your shows, so it's true. It, that means I think Dobie played Aishat Potifar. I did play Aishat Potifar. It was it was very exciting, and I think that you just missed being up on the stage this summer, and that's why you're here tonight. That that is definitely true. I definitely did miss being up on stage. Yeah, so here you are. Welcome. I was gonna say about the Nietzsche's, by the way. One of my favorite moments, my favorite Nietzsche moments of the summer, uh, after a rehearsal. There was one Nietzsche who missed rehearsal. And I was walking back down to the office and she flew over my head on the zip line and said, I'm sorry, I missed rehearsal, Sally. And I thought, if that's not camp, what is? That a kid can fly over your head and apologize for missing rehearsal. It was that's amazing. Awesome. I, I just have a, I have a couple uh, I have a couple shout outs from the from the YouTube stream. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Ari Mirzov is watching. He just sent me a, a quotation. If you know the Mirzovs, you know who wears the pants. That's funny because I just said that. Um, Dove Adler wants to give a shout out to uh, Busha with his bucket hats. I don't know what that means. Go Busha. Busha, the, Busha's bucket hat collection and jersey and jersey collection. <laughs> Interesting. If you want to comment on the YouTube feed, by the way, we're going to be, if you have questions, comments, feel free to write them on the YouTube channel and we can mention them. Let's get to the floor. Competition that was done on day two. We have a quick video recap of that competition. Everybody can stay seated, folks on the screen for a recap of our older Sheelan CHOP competition. Name. Jonathan Svi Spear. Wow. But people go with Jay Z. Jay -Z. Jonathan Svi. That would I don't think I would have guessed either of those. It's true. Yeah, maybe not. I was gonna go with a Joseph Zachary. No, Jonathan Svi. I think you should tell people I think my name's better. Joseph Zachary. Well, maybe I'll start with that starting right now. Why not? Go for it. Um Jay Z, just for the folks at home who don't know Jay Z, Jay Z is the color war master. When he's here all summer, he does color war. But even when he's not here all summer, like this summer, he comes up special just to do color war. And, and I thought it would be a really interesting thing to hear from Jay-Z. What goes into preparing for color war? It's a great question, Sally. First of all, um, thank God I have a wonderful, wonderful committee. Uh, people that are really working hard to make sure this is a great event. Um, every single meeting that we have um, in planning for color war beforehand, we have one major goal in all of those meetings, and that is to make a program, make a couple days, that give every single student, uh, every single camper, uh, the opportunity to shine. There are so many different activities, whether it's singing, it's the band, it's chidon, it's sports, whatever it is, um, every single camper has an opportunity to show what they're good at, and that's really uh, super special to I watch. always remember that about camp. Both when I was a camper, counselor, then division head, there was always like that kid whose thing was the he was good at like the bucket brigade. He knew the systems, he knew how much water should be in it, but he waited all summer for the bucket brigade. Th that was it, exactly. Let's take a look. Speaking of campers shining, we are about to see the Elanote bench project. They are walking the bench in onto the floor. I wonder, do we know where they're going to put these benches? Anybody That's a good go? question. I think they're lining it up along one of the roads. Um, look at that. Beautiful. Wow. wow. 
Nice Marsha on that bench. I wish we could get a close up so we can see the detail. Let's hear it, yellow team, for your Elano bench. That's really, really beautiful. And by the way, we need more benches in camp. I actually had the guys uh, build me two for the show this past week. I want to give a and big shout out to Jim Barton, who is the caretaker the of this camp, basically. Team. He is the muscle Let's behind all the, the operations that bench. happen here. And Jim has a crew of guys, Tom, Jesse, Ken, and they build everything. Every project that you see tonight, everything that's made out of wood, the benches, the arrows, whatever, the signs, everything that's made out of wood has been built by this crew of guys. And they are, they never say no. It's an amazing, amazing thing. If you say build me a bench, they build you a bench. If you say build me a cabin, they I'll build you a cabin. It's really incredible. And like yeah. you said, when you have a good committee, things happen. Good team, exactly. Jay, I hope you don't mind if I wanted to, uh... Once I have you here, I want to switch gears a little bit. Go for it. Talk about a non-color war topic. Is that okay? Sure, go for it, Toby. So um, I heard through the grapevine that there was there was a prank done a couple of days ago um, on a certain staff member. Sure. And it was it was the first time in all of that staff member's time here that he didn't know about something going on in camp. Exactly. In the spirit, we we could get into the the specifics of that particular prank maybe sure. afterwards. Sure. But I was wondering fr from your days as a camper, then a counselor, then. Uh, Head Mission staff, yep. what is the best prank you have ever seen in Morris Shop? Oh, wow, Toby, that's, that's a great question. Um, the best prank I've ever seen in Morris Shop. Um, one year, they, they, they prank called somebody. Um, and I don't remember exactly oh, the, the bus prank. This was what? The, the famous yeah, bus you remember prank. that? Yeah, yeah, go for it, Toby. The mini buses. Yeah. They, they, they uh, prank called a certain member that was in charge of getting the buses for camp. As the director of the bus company, I told them that they only had access to minibuses, and that oh, all that. 700 campers would be going home on minibuses. Yeah, that, that was a good one. I remember that. I, was, I thought you were gonna go with the uh, famous Barry Klein fish prank of uh, what was that? <laughs> that was like 07 or something. The story's out there watching. He, he, he knows about that one. <laughs> that that that, that prank took a, a lot of um, <laughs> exactly. a lot of planning. I'd love to share with the folks at home what this year's prank was, but let's just turn our attention to the floor for a moment for the Monty game. Monty Gold Gazebo Project. This year, well, it was supposed to be last year that we were unveiled the, the gazebos, but we got to see them for the first time this year because we weren't open last year. Um, these beautiful gazebos dotting the campuses, and they've really increased the space that we have to sit under a, a covering and sing, learn, and that's really significant because most of camp is outdoors. And when it rains, all those activities, all those shears that usually sit outside in, the, in nature have to find a different space to meet. And then you end up with lots of groups sitting indoors in the same space. It's not conducive to conversation. So they built these, they built these beautiful gazebos. And here we have what you see, folks, are the tiles that are going to go in the ceilings of the gazebos. So that when you're sitting in your chair and you look up, this is what you're going to see. It's very noticeable, right? When you walk onto campus, you have these gazebos, and they're great spaces for infor know, informal learning. Does anyone know what language gazebo is originally? Is that English? Sally? Um, <laughs> really putting me on the spot here. Gazebo. It depends how you say it. If you say gazebo, in Spanish, if you say gazebo. So it's probably it's originally Spanish. Maybe. I'm not so sure. And all these people, all these campers who are holding these projects help to create these projects. And like you said, Jay-Z, every kid has a chance to shine, whether it's through song, through athletics, through art. Dance. One of my there favorites so is the many. Apache Relay. It's a bunch of like 45 yeah. random activities, you know. Um, my favorite was the uh, probably now banned Spin Around the Bat. Yeah, Spin Around oh, the Bat. You got a concussion. Yeah, yeah. That eat the way. watermelon. I'm sure you've seen those pictures. Oh, you know, just watermelon. talents that people, you know, never even realized they had. You know, now they, do, now they know. 
eat, putting your face in that watermelon, that's something that never leaves you. The camper that gets to, that's, that puts their face in that watermelon and has to eat half a watermelon, that's something that, that stays with them for the rest of their life. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter if you become the next president of the United States, you will forever, like, that will have a special place in, the, in your heart. It's true. Jay-Z, what time generally do the generals go to sleep during color war? Great, great, great question. Uh, when color war broke out on Saturday night, yeah. right, so Saturday night was really night. We met with the generals starting at midnight. That's when we started to meet with them and give them all the details, all the responsibilities, all the rules, all the projects, and everything. Uh, and then they had the opportunity before they went to sleep to really, really get organized. So we stayed up with them to help them, guide them. Um, I would say probably the first night, probably in the 3, 3.30 range. Uh, a little quick nap before davening. And then the next two nights was not as late because things were already organized and they were moving and they had their, they had their plan together. Um, but I would, say, I would say pretty late. Wow. But it was all worth it. All worth it. Um, I, I grabbed the generals before uh, this event started tonight, and I told them that over the last three days, they were, they were busy. They had a lot of responsibilities, a lot to do. But we trusted them with running the camp, basically, for three days, and they did a great, great job. They got everyone involved, which was awesome, and they had a, the best time. You know, they'll look back at these couple days. It's really, really special time. Amazing. We are we're about to see the... the uh, Alufim Alufot project. They made Arun Kodesh. Arune Kodesh. And they are going. A shark's ark. Are they going in the shark tank? Yeah, they're not going. No, but yeah. why is it shark? More sharks. Well, oh, more sharks. Oh, more sharks. Because it rhymes. So where are these Arons going? These uh, Aaron are going uh, in the in the quads underneath the dining room. We have the boys' quad and the girls' quad, um, and we have davening there throughout the week, especially on Shabbos also. So these are new, beautiful Aaron Kodeshes there. Take a look at this. The, the teamwork that went into creating these wow. and carrying them. I mean, I I love to see this. You know, I, I love when a group of campers comes together, works together to create something beautiful. That's it, what we do in theater, and this is just amazing. In such a short amount of time. So they had two and a half days. Sunday morning, they were really getting their ideas together. This was due today at 4 o'clock. So they got it all done. Amazing. Listen, you know, sometimes we say we have kids, and then we get so excited when we get to put them to sleep. <laughs> Folks, we are sending your children home tired, so have no fear. They're going to come home, and they're going to go to sleep. <laughs> they're exhausted from this color war, but always because they've been up making memories. Having a great time, exactly. All right, we're about to see the yellow team's Aron. They keep telling me it's an Aron. It's not an Aron. It's an Aron. <laughs> Aron. Right? <laughs> Okay, here it comes. Here it is. Wow. What, what is that? There's, there's so many things to look at. Each team has a theme. The teams are Am, Team Am, Blue, Team Echad, Yellow. And each of their projects has to represent their theme. The Color War booklet is extensive, actually, with so many descriptions. Jay-Z, who puts that together? Is that something that you work on? Yeah, we work on, uh, like I said, not, not me alone, the whole committee together. Uh, we spend time putting together a description of every project. Um, every single project, after it's brought around uh, to show the whole camp, it goes backstage. There are a group of judges there who judge every single project. I'm involved in the scoring piece of it also. Every single game, every project, every everything gets put into that Excel spreadsheet. Uh, totally, 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 uh, everything gets in. Yeah, so we're about to see the, I think this is a new project. This is a new project, the domino. We gave each team uh, thousands of, of, of dominoes to create a, uh, a domino effect project. Amazing. That's so, so we're cool. We're about to see that. And then we're going to be back here after that video with Danny Schatzkis, who is the band leader extraordinaire. Um, who was leading Shiria and the Shiria band. So we're about to see that. And then we're going to see the shell. We have a lot of things still in store for you. I've been seeing those boxes of dominoes in the fitness center for a few days. It takes a lot of patience. 
for uh, real. Yeah. And like, it's, it's not something you can start one day and then go to sleep and then continue on the next morning. Per- Every- yeah, perseverance, trying hard. How many times did each team knock theirs down? A, lo- a lot. I think for next year, we should think about the same task, human dominoes. You have to use every member in your team. <laughs> And do a human domino. <laughs> Who would work on the art project? I think this would be worth it. <laughs> Here we go. This is the domino project from the Yellow FI team. That was was pretty cool. (laughs) Could you imagine the amount of time it took to set those up? How many times did you hear, no, right? Probably every few seconds. Well, it looks like it was a one-take type thing, but who knows? No, everything looks like it's one take these days. All right, we're back with Danny Schatzkis. Yes. You guys know each other? A little bit. Okay, interesting. We know each other a little bit. I I apologize, Danny. I feel like a third wheel. (laughs) I meant to put him in the middle, but, you know. That's all right. I'm always in the middle when it comes to things with us. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Danny, tell yes. us. What have you been working on for the last three days with the band, the teams, the harmonies? What goes into Shiria, the finale of the finale? Yes. Um, it's not easy. It's never easy. Um, especially, you know, it's very different than the regular Shiria that we have in the middle of the summer. Um, because... There, it's on the it's on the calendar. You know when it is. We can even start preparing like as early as we want, so we can start getting things in place. Color War Shiria can only begin being worked on once Color War starts, and then you're on a countdown of three days essentially. And the crazy thing is that the band doesn't even start practicing until a day and a half in, because I first have to work with the team leaders. They have to pick their songs. They have to come up with their arrangements. We have to. So the band didn't even start practicing together until yesterday afternoon. So we essentially had three rehearsals. And uh, yeah. you've been nonstop and working. Yes. Your really wife must want to kill you. You know, it's, it's really um, okay. it's unbelievable when you think about all these these projects and all the the, the Shiria. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Here comes the blue shellet. Wow. Wow. Am Sigula, Am Yisrael Chai, right? Blue team Am. You know, like Danny was saying, they only have three days. This this yeah, is in the same all boat. All this gets done. All this it's gets amazing. done. You know, the, the, the camp gets overrun by just enthusiastic campers. And, and, and it's also really cool how the younger divisions kind of know that they're inheriting yep, this they're project be, next year. Yeah, yeah. And it's like kind of like a coming of age almost within camp. And, and you know, you look at how large the camp is, but just think about everything that had to get done, every video, Every um, project, all the painting, the dominoes, the shiria, every single person is working on something in addition to the regular activity that they have. It's right. unreal. It's unreal. And it's not like they all know beforehand who's working on what. I mean, these generals have to reach out to their teams. There are, lute- right. there are generals, there are lieutenants, there are camper captains. And the reason that they have a whole team of people is because they need to okay. reach out to every single division for to find out who's talented in art, who can sing, who knows who's really good at sports, who can do right. racing. Right. Well, well, that's also what you're saying is is it gives all the kids an opportunity to kind of get involved. You know, yeah. there's so many different activities Let, going on. Let's go to the floor because I believe there's going to be someone speaking about the show. Yeah. Four. Three. Two, one. Our shallot represents the power of working as an arm and the success this sort of unity could accomplish. On the top, you could see the Midbar and Harsinai with the words Am Segula. 
Then on the bottom half, there's modern day Jerusalem, depicted by some of Israel's greatest accomplishments. The light rail, a soldier, and of course the Kotel, with the words Am Yisrael Chai written through the sky. And showing where we were as the chosen nation in the Midbar, fresh out of slavery, we are showing the potential for greatness. To then depicting a scene of the current flourishing state of our nation to show the way we use that potential and create greatness. In the center, there is the world, meant to express the passage of time and the millions of people this transformation required. All these aspects are meant to convey the power of working together as Nam and the wonders it can accomplish. No individual could have single-handedly built this nation. It took a sense of community and camaraderie to advance and improve from the Am Segula we were to the Am, to the Am Yisrael Chai we were now. Let's hear our team on blue! That was, uh, that was Ellie Parnas. That was Eli Parnas. Eli Parnas. He spoke very nicely. You know what? Can I can I actually take a minute to just and acknowledge the Sharia band that we have tonight? Sure. Eli okay. Parnas was one of our drummers during the first Sharia. Um, we've got some incredibly talented kids. Actually, well, maybe clearly to, to be able to yeah, put this together yeah, in three days, they really have to. Um, but this time we've got we've got Sasha fight on guitar, we've got Aaron Mitchell playing keyboards, we've got A.B. Fields playing piano, um, and then playing drums, I've got one of, not, that, those are our campers in the band, and then I recruited. Hold on one second, oh, Danny, okay. let's take a look Stop at the there. yellow yeah. shellet, and then we'll continue on with the band members. Let's take a look. Oh, there's a bride and groom under the chuppah. Oh. It's so amazing how all these, these shellets tell a story, and that's kind of, kind of what, uh, what was his name, uh, Eli? Eli. Was, Eli was was you know speaking about and it kind of uh, brings together the whole the whole uh, shell it's really really amazing and they they work okay, together as a team to sketch it out to discuss the yellow, different components if they're going to use textures what colors they're going to use here we go in five wow. four it's really nice three okay let's hear from two emma and one our team is Achad. We all know Hashem is Echad, and it's our job to emulate Hashem. But that's kind of a scary thought, because how can we possibly do that? We think a good place to start is with the 13 attributes of God. That's why we put them on the top in the clouds. Additionally, the gematria of Echad adds up to 13, which is the same as the gematria of Ahava. And in order to become Echad, we need Ahava. This is the reason why we decided to make the chuppah, because what's a better way to represent Ahava than a chuppah? A wedding also represents two individuals uniting as one. There's a lot of significance to understanding who you are as an individual. And once you understand who you are on an individual level, you can then find your other half and together become one again. The pasuk that we used is said after Adam and Chaba find each other. It represents our human desire to connect with people. Once we are able to find ourselves, it will be a lot easier to find the missing piece to the whole picture. Good luck, Blue, and go yellow! Wow. Do we know where those shallots are going? Are they going the outside of the Narcasia? I don't know. It's a good question. We'll have to, we'll have to keep an eye out on campus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I love that when we come back next summer, we get to see where right. everything's hung. This camp is full of color and full yep. of history. There are shallots from dating back decades and decades uh -huh. ago. Yeah, it's exciting. Look at that one more time. Gorgeous. It's all, it's all part of it. So while you have me, I do want to just finish up talking about our process for Shiria because that is the penultimate event of the evening. Uh, to round out our band, I recruited Khalif Kapo on drums, who was in my first summer here. He was one of uh, he was the drummer in the first camper band, and we got him back. Uh, he's, uh, he's here all summer, but we got him playing. And then, of course, I asked my very good friend Dove Katz otherwise known to many as Digital Go, he's DJing tonight, but he's also playing guitar in the band tonight. Excellent musician. Don't uh, become the face that we see all the time yes. when we have good programs. Yeah, good he's, he's been amazing program. throughout the summer. Yeah, really really awesome. awesome. Dove's been amazing. And great to work with. Fantastic to work with. I love having him on stage. The kids love having him on stage. We all kind of uh, feed off each other when we're playing. You know, it's such a great thing for a lot of these kids. Not everybody gets the opportunity to play 
music with other people. And to give someone the opportunity to play is very different than playing on your own or practicing on your own. And for them to have the opportunity not just to practice and play and jam with each other in the studio, but to get on stage and perform is such an awesome opportunity for them. It's such a great creative outlet. And I just, uh, I'm just so glad that we're able to do it every time. Yeah. And there's a lot of... Uh, it's a great thing. It's a great confidence booster, you know, when you when you walk around camp and you say, "I'm in the band." That's right. You know, that's right. It's a really, uh, I, and I see kids, I see kids who are in the Merkazia when nobody else is in the Merkazia. And if anybody, any staff members, says, "What are you? Where are you supposed to be?" All they need to say is, "I'm in the band." That's and, right. And, and they're clear. Covered. Hard clear. Yeah, it's really incredible. So right now, um, they, the camp is watching the lip dub videos. They had to play a song and create a video. So they're watching those now. While we're watching that, we're actually going to say goodbye to Danny. Um, i got to get back on stage. Thank you, yeah, Danny. Yeah, you got to get back on stage. Knock him down. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good Looking luck. Forward. I hope everybody out there enjoys it. Let's take a look at the floor for a moment. Let's take a look at that video as it's going. And we are going to transition to having Melissa. Dovi, can you grab Melissa? I think she's over there. How are you, Melissa? How's everything? I'm so, great. Melissa is someone that I am lucky enough to work very, very closely throughout the summer. Um, as the program director, you know, a lot of the things have to do with food. So I'm somebody who could say that Melissa has the type of job that when the summer's over, she probably feels like she could conquer the world because yeah. it is so involved and so elaborate. There's actually uh, a, a statistic that somebody threw out to me that at some point in the summer, during one of the competitions, there was 54 events going on simultaneously. And that all comes from the great Melissa Rothwell. And by the way, I just have to say also, she probably feels like she can conquer the world because you did. You conquered this world. And one of the things that I love about you, Melissa, is that you make everybody's thing feel important. Like, whatever you text Melissa, she answers right away. And as if what you're asking her is the most important thing in that moment. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. But, I, Melissa, what is the most rewarding aspect of your job? I think what both of you touched upon is that, you know, we plan all year um, for these two months. We live 10 for two, but we really do. And we plan all year. And what's so exciting is that I get to see everything come to life. You know, a lot of it we plan. It's on paper. Um, I see the logistics. I, you know, connect operations at the kitchen and all the different aspects of camp. And then I get to see it. And I get to see the kids' faces and see how excited they are about things. Um, watch them look at the calendar and guess what each program is going to look like, how it's going to play out. Um, and that, to me, is just so rewarding. I, I guess that's why we're all here, right? <laughs> yeah. I have, I have one really, really important question for you. Who is your favorite head chef in the kitchen in 2021? Tough one. Uh, you have to answer. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a hard one, but you know, I, you know, I'll get, go. <laughs> get, you can get back to me on I'll that. I'll get back to you. And, and what do we have to look forward to next year? Oh, okay, that's a tough one. Um, well, the great thing is that pretty much a day or two after camp ends, um, we get right back into planning and start planning wow. for next year. And so um, we work, you know, our team works together all year to plan great events um, for camp. And so we'll have to see what's in store. You'll have to wait, um, wait and see. Ah, uh, amazing suspense. <laughs> we can't wait. I'll be, I'll be texting and emailing you regularly to find out. Look forward to it. <laughs> can, can I just mention, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about for next year, and I'm, I'm remembering this prank that we pulled on Jeremy, um, where we told the campers and Jeremy, who had no idea this was happening, that Jeremy was retiring. Yes. So 
we pulled that off this uh, this past week. <laughs> Whose idea was that, Melissa? Um, it was it was a joint uh, work piece of work between many of us in the programming team and the programming team, and um, we just J Jeremy can be a prankster sometimes. And we thought um, it would be a great color work fake out um, to get not only the campers involved but also Jeremy. Uh, so I'm, that was a I'm lot pretty of fun. sure half the room was in tears. <laughs> That's true. It was. It was. It was, it was one of, I, I think the funniest part is that 95% of the people in the room didn't realize Jeremy wasn't in on it. Right. And I think that that, that, that like for the people that knew, it was that much funnier. Like I, I, yeah, I it was, it was sure. just, it was so well executed. Thank you. I think Jeremy even said this is probably one of the first events in the last 15 years that he's been here that he didn't know about. Right. Um, so that was also uh, right. exciting and rewarding for our team that we pulled it off. Um, True, he's so it was, involved. It was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really knows everything yes. that's going on yeah every single thing definitely a lot of moving pieces um and and he knows about all of it well, so well done one of the yeah, best really. i've ever Thank seen you. <laughs> so you did say in a day or two after camp you start planning what do you do in those days i'll even two? say that sometimes we start planning during this last week of uh, oh my camp. gosh we'll start looking at the calendar for next year and start looking at the dates and how things fall out and decide then wow even you know the draft of the calendar uh, is, is already set uh, and to start building from that. So you barely take a breath. Yeah. But, but it's a good energy. You know, right. we keep the energy from the end of the summer, especially, especially with color war going on right now. The energy is high. Um, and as sad as we are to end camp um, in just a few days, just the energy that we have right now, we kind of build on that and like look at what they're feeling out there and how can we bring that to next summer. You know, speaking about the energy in camp, I mean, you know, I, I, I took the opportunity that during the afternoons to kind of see what was going on during color war. Seeing the Apache race, and, and, and it's just, it, it, it's crazy. You see these kids running as fast as they possibly can, yes. or jumping over each other's backs, climbing a wall, devouring a watermelon. And, and, and the one thing that I get to see a lot, because I'm literally stationed in the center of camp in the dining hall, is that everyone thinks that I know where the flag is. Capture that the flag. flag. <laughs> Capture the flag. Besides the clues being so well thought out, and like you see the excitement on the kids' faces as they're waiting for the clue to come up on the, yeah, on, right. the on the big screen, and then they're trying to decipher these clues, and like it's just so funny because it's not even about like the win or loss. There's like there's like this weird um, tradition and, and and bragging rights that kind of like right. goes along with this. Yes, uh, it's this, the this, whole this event. of it. I, I love when the staff kids, when our kids come into the staff dining room and they're like, okay. <laughs> Tell me, no one's listening. Where's the flag? And and they don't tell us. So the no truth idea. is, I didn't even know where the flag is. I actually like to not know. Yeah, me too. Uh, because you know <laughs> what? So who knows? There's who about the one person, who knows? Jason, Jason David, uh, and his team, and there's like three or four people that are involved in choosing a spot and creating the clues, and they really keep it tight-lipped uh, to just them, so that no one's tempted to share right. or give a facial expression. So, so I, I actually ran through the clues with Jason, and it is so elaborate and yeah. so well thought out. It's unbelievable. It's fun to look back after the flag was found and see right how the clues, and you're like, oh, yeah, of course this led right to it, but never would have seen it coming. Amazing. Yeah. Let's, um, let's go to the floor for a minute and take a look at that energy. So the, the younger Steelies are preparing to do their stand-up, which is the little act that gets them into the song. Right. right. It, it was something new that we thought of for this year. Each year in Color War, we do try to find a new project um, just to change things up a little bit. And one of the things we've always had is a stand-up before Sharia, something to get the whole team up on their chairs, um, introduce them to the song. We like it to be creative, something different. And so we thought this year, why don't we assign it to a specific division um, so that they could focus on it for a couple of days and really come up with something um, unique and special. Um, so this year it was the Younger Sheely Project. So we're excited to see what they bring to the table. It's just for the first song. Um, that's the one that's going to be judged. So both teams will do it just for their first Hebrew theme song. Great. The, and the energy down there, it's, it's really a roller coaster because in between all this amazing, happy, color work stuff going on, there's also um, real, um, real visual reminders that camp is coming to a close. The trunks yep. are put out. The dumpsters <laughs> are rolled onto campus. Yep. The lost okay, and found yeah, is put go. out, Again, spread sure out for everyone. All the projects are put outside. And so what you find is kids 
super excited and then they pass by something and they get sad and yeah. it's a real roller coaster of three it's, days. It's, it's definitely an emotional roller coaster. I actually have to buy extra mop heads for my staff to clean up the dining room tomorrow from all the tears. <laughs> it, it, it gets it gets very very, very intense. Teary. And look, it's it's a testament to, to, to how great how how the kids feel about coming here for the summer. And okay, and it's we're really, it's really kind of special. Ready to be it's really it's special to be part of it. Okay. All right, they're about to do the stand up. I just have to say, I cry like a teenage girl when camp is over. I'm not ashamed to say it. I sit Let's in the passenger seat of my car and I just Don't cry. I am not. I am for not ready sure to go back to the real world. <laughs> I like the little world that we have Let's here. I know. I know. I stay an extra day just so that I can see that Let's when everyone leaves, camp is actually over. It makes me feel better to go home. It's a very weird feeling to be here after camp. All right, here we go to the floor for and Blue Team Um. Counselor, big round of applause up. for Atara Yudin. <laughs> Assistant Director, let's hear it for Arya Yudin. <laughs> Director of Creative Arts, let's hear it for Ethel Koskis. And last but certainly not least, the woman broadcasting this event back at home up in our sound booth. Let's hear it for Sally Shotskis. And for the first time, we have the younger Sheely boys and girls. Their project is introducing the stand-up for the first song on each team. The judges for the younger Sheely stand-up project. From Alu Folk Girls, your division head, let's hear it for Gabby Dector. Alu Finn boys. Let's hear it for Gabe Isaacs! Nisi Boys Division Head! Let's hear it for Yosef Topak! A nurse, an amazing nurse in our health center. Let's hear it for Chevy Sadi! Our head of girl sports! A big round of applause for Daniela Hurt! And last but not least, our head of canteen. A big round of applause for Kara Feldman. Okay, we are ready. We are ready to begin. The first song of the evening. The first song of the evening is called the theme song. A selection of one Hebrew song depicting the respective team's theme. As I just said, each theme song will be introduced by our younger Sheely campers, but we cannot start until it's complete silence. So here we go. The first song and the first stand up by the younger Sheely's, boys and girls. We're gonna start when it's complete silence in five, four, three, Two and one. Um, the nation, um, the generations, um, we will be here for each other. Um, the nations, um, the generations, um, we will be here for each other. When one falls, we pick him up. When one falls, we get him up. When one falls, we get him up together. Blue team, it's your turn. Get up! Amazing job, younger Sheely boys and girls. We are ready for the first song of Mara Shia 2021.
Okay, we are ready. We are ready for the first song of Morashia 2021, but we cannot start until it's completely silent. Five, four, three, two, one. Presenting this first song by Team Am. Shma Kolinu.
now um being Sa sally at the judge yeah which is a great opportunity for us yeah to, to, <laughs> to talk about her i feel like there's no adult here right now right? <laughs> that's what I'm, i feel like the teacher <laughs> left the class you know what i mean <laughs> this is not going to be pretty guys <laughs> uh cam or Rashad does not take responsibility for anything that happens on there for the next uh 15 I, I, minutes i will say those girls who just sang if they had the mic that i have they for sure would have dropped it after that because they were awesome they phenomenal were amazing phenomenal I was just saying, like, I, I don't know who's going to win the color, but they won the night. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Check the... It's, it, it's 100 degrees up here. Yeah, it's 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 98 degrees up here, and Dovey's got the, the hair to prove it with the fan blowing on him. I have no hair, so I don't have such issues. But I, I know Dovey, Dovey and I were talking about the lip sync competition uh, before, oh, yeah. before we went back. I, know I, I wasn't on air for it, which, which was good because I got to see it, but it was basically... Every year they do a different sort of video competition that's like um, with, with a different twist to it. Um, it's my favorite part of Color every time. So like when the Mannequin Challenge was big, they did Mannequin Challenge. Then there was... Um, so it's, it's kind of a more relevant... You yeah, know, then they did one like out of camp where you had to incorporate random people in Lakewood, Pennsylvania. So this one, they had to be one, it was one scene. The whole video was one scene, one shot from beginning to end. You couldn't have any cuts. So... Uh, the blue team's one was a kid waking with he was like Bruno Mars in Uptown Funk and he woke up and it was the whole the entire video was him walking to the dining room it was it was unbelievable the way they did it nice. and like along the way he meets different people and they come in and join the video um, I was I was blown away it, it's, it's unbelievable I mean I guess I'm, I'm a generation or two older than these kids and it, it's it's just unbelievable how savvy they are and they, they put these things together in such a short period of time yeah it's crazy and with, with such awesome awesome production value it's so really, really impressive. We're, we're going live to the Younger Steely stand-up project. I was explaining to you before Five, what stand-up is. Four, three, two, one. There are times in the Sefer Torah where the Jews are compared to the sand on the floor, and there are other times where the Jews are compared to the stars in the sky. And the question is why? You know, there's a lot of sand and there's a lot of stars. You know, we get it, we're a lot of people. But like, why is it that we're compared to these two different things? And the answer I heard that on the one side, we're the Am, right? When you pick up sand, you can't just pick up one grain of sand. You're either picking up a lot of sand, you're not picking up anything at all. You know, that's the Am. You know, we're a strong nation together always. You know, the generations go back and back, and that's the way we are, we're a tiny community. But at the same time, we, have, we look up and you see the stars in the sky, and you're like, wow. Every single star is spread out. It has its own light, its own different thing. And that's exactly what our song, Kochavim Noflim, is all about. It's about how every single Jew has its own individual power to do amazing things. You know, if you look up at the back wall, you see that there's a lot of different stars. And all those stars have a different personality trait, or talent, or difference between people. 
And that's what it's all about, you know? The difference between people is what makes us beautiful, you know? All the differences that all we have and like the individuality is what really makes us a nation. So yes, at one point we have the arm and we're a strong arm and we're together, but the beautify and the differences is really makes us a nation. Thank you. Our stand-up displays five individual talents. These talents are part of what makes each individual, each person talent is unique and the uniqueness is what makes individuals so special. Each of these talents also contributes to one community. Amechad. There's a, say, there's a saying, which means the entire world was created for me. Hashem made every individual with their own strengths and talents that he wants us to use in the world in order to make the world a better place. Go yellow! Stand up! Let's go! Amazing job, Younger Sheelys, all judges. Judges for the Younger Sheely Project, please hand in your score sheets. Please, judges for the Younger Sheely Project, please hand in your score sheets to Rabbi Spear. And we are about to begin our second song of the evening. The first song for the Yellow Echa team. Here we go. We're starting in five, in four, in three, in two, and in one. Look at the stars, look at the shine for 
That was awesome. That was Very pretty good. impressive. So for this this competition, there's a, there's a whole bunch of really um, seasoned judges. You know, you got you got Dave Friedman, who, from what I understand, has been in a camp since he's 16 years old, and I think now he's. I don't know if there's anyone alive that's seen <laughs> that has heard more alma maters than Dave Friedman. Dave Friedman might hold the record, and I cannot imagine there's anybody that's more qualified to judge a competition like this. I've actually heard um, Dave Friedman is obviously he's a legend. And um, I heard that Superman wears Dave Friedman pajamas. Did you? Yeah, Do Dovey actually mentioned something about Dave Friedman's shirt. I don't know if you see it. I, I, I thought maybe he had a tailor come. Do Do Wait, you, he's right there, actually. You can see him in our background. Can see, you can see him behind He's got him. a half. Every uh, every color war, he wears half of each team, but it's like perfectly done down, down the middle. Yeah, perfectly. I mean, yeah, look at him right there. You can't, you can't get any better than that. And Do Dovey suggested maybe he just throws two T-shirts up in the air and they just show up like that back and is uh, dressed. I can't imagine... It. I can't imagine it happening any other way. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty epic. But Dave Friedman is, is amazing and uh, you know tr tremendous asset to this camp and uh, you know awesome awesome person to work with. There's also another judge we have is Ethel Koskis, who's uh, the director of the arts here. Um, and and Ethel. By the way, just just saying that sentence. How, how many cam how many camps have a director of the arts? <laughs> is that not is that not the most amazing but, but, thing like, in the world? Like I say the arts, and there's like 18 different arts, you know, options that, the, 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 right. that, that you could choose from within, within the arts. But Ethel speaks nine languages, and nine. I, nine languages fluently. And I don't know if you know this about Ethel, but she also won the senior staff foosball competition in 2019. Did she? True story. And she actually mentioned that, she that that the only reason she didn't win it this year is because they didn't have it. Who didn't she be? <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't have the the entire stat line, but but uh, she did win the competition. Uh, so the other judges for this uh, the Shiria are Ari and Atara Yudin, who were also uh, I believe started dating in camp. They um, did in a and different camp. That's not important. <laughs> I think I was a baby when they started dating in that camp, though. I think I was there. Interesting. So, some might say I played a pivotal role in it. I, I would give you the uh, the present for yeah. making the show. I didn't get it. I'm waiting still. I'll mention it. I'll definitely bring it up next time. <laughs> Here we go. Looks We're like the yellow armor mater is coming up. Let's go down to the uh, to the floor. The alma mater. The alma mater is very often not only the culmination of our color, but truth be told, it's really the cul the transition to start culminating su this summer. We need everybody's complete silence and respect as each team reflects not only on their theme, but on their Morosha experience over the last seven weeks. Five, four, three, two, still too loud. One. Camp Morsha is a place where we've learned through passion and heart and powered by the sky is the
three, two, one. Here we go. Presenting the first alma mater, Team Echad.
spark inside What makes us feel alive The limit is the sky That was an alma mater for the ages. That was awesome. That, that solo was was like beyond. She, was, yeah. she had heart. She was she was really getting into it. Yep. That was really well done. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, nothing to do with the alma mater, but I, I did miss I missed Melissa Rothwax's interview, which I was a little bit upset about. Melissa was my first boss here when I came here in 2016. I was in Olive Fim counselor, and Melissa was the girls' division head. She was a division head for Olive Fim. With, with, Shaq, yeah. with Shaq. Shaq was Olive Yeah, Shaq. We, actually, we called them Malak <laughs> together, I promise. That so was their Shaq nickname. Shaq was here. Shaq yeah. was here for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he we just, were debating left. the whole summer between Shaq, Shakissa and Malak, but we settled on Malak. That would have been um, the, the tabloid that was, uh, title. It was, a, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal summer. And I thought about it also because like when we were talking about pranks, I remember one of, one of the all-time pranks that I did that summer. And it was very simple. It was like not destructive at all. But Shaq had a golf cart that he drove around the whole summer. Well, he rented it. He, it was yeah, his yeah, own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me and when he, and when he, on one of his off, and he knew everyone used it while he was off. And on one of his off days, we got a picture um, on like Google Images that looked like the Morish Ali, and it was a golf cart sinking in a lake. <laughs> and we pretended that one of the campers had driven it into the lake. That's and he amazing. was, he came back, he was freaking out. That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it was phenomenal. I, one thing also, I, I work very closely with Melissa throughout the summer and throughout the year. Um, on, on you know different camp related projects and she is also so gullible she's actually starting to get used to my my sense of humor but i mess with her constantly and she always she always bites <laughs> she always bites she, she, she's always like are you serious <laughs> i don't know what you're talking but, about but she's awesome she's amazing what, what just you weren't here what we said about melissa she has one of those jobs in camp where when she finishes she probably feels like she could do any job in the world because it is she's 24 7 for beyond, two months yeah it's beyond involved and beyond elaborate and so complicated and she's so good at it. It's just, yeah. she's unbelievable. And, and like that's where, that's really where the whole camp runs in that room at that program programming office. That's that's where, uh, it's it's the engine that fuels the entire camp. The nucleus, yeah, for sure. For sure, and I mean, I, I mean and the, 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 the product that comes out of that room is just unreal. Yeah. Every single time. Let's go down to the floor for Blue Alma Mater. We didn't do Blue Alma Mater yet. Here we go, five, four, three, two, and one. Only like and shy, but if we work together, we can light up the entire room.
presenting the fourth and final song of the evening, the alma mater for Team Om is starting in five, four, three. Shh. We need everybody in the bleachers to stay silent. Yellow team, please give the blue team the attention and respect that they give you. Here we go, three, two, and one.
Let's hear it for the blue team! And we're back. Wow. Jo joined by none other than Sally herself, who judged that competition. Listen, this has never happened before. I was double cast. <laughs> I was double cast as the broadcaster and the judge. Well, you know what, Sally? They knew who the most qualified person to judge. It's like it's like one of those one-man uh, plays. You know what I'm talking about? Can I tell you a secret? See this thing behind us? This plexiglass? Yes, yep. I've been terrified it's, by it the entire it's, broadcast. It's open up here, right? It makes it very difficult to hear, even though it's short. So, by the way, that's what happens in shul with the mechitza. It's really hard to hear, even if it's short. So I had to go down there. If I'm going to be a fair judge, i got to be down on the floor. i got to be really... I'll just tell you from the other side of the mechitza, it's nothing that, that exciting you're missing out on, by the way. Well, maybe it's intentional then. <laughs> I will tell your father you said that to me. It's heard from me many times. So let me tell you what I noticed down there. Every kid is singing his and her heart out. It's an amazing thing to see. You know, I guess there's no greater reward than when, you know, you put all this work into all this programming and you see the kids really enjoying it. So I, I still remember my alma maters from camp as yes, a camper. So I, I can sing them right now. So I won't, I. but I could. Uh, yeah, uh, by the way, me too. And that's many, you know, years ago. I, I really still remember, you know, my camp uh, songs. Yeah. Camp Raleigh, alma mater. I can talk about it because it doesn't exist anymore. Camp Raleigh. <laughs> well, you can mention the name. Yeah, that's why I can that's talk right, about that's it. That's the way it works. <laughs> yeah. Camp I don't think it's, it's not actually a rule. <laughs> talk about, like, the camp from uh, Agent Cody Banks, too, because it's closed down also. What did it close? What? Did it close? <laughs> I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> anyway, so right now, as Melissa told us, the judges are backstage tallying up the points. But your scorecard's here. No, nope, no, nope, it's not here, actually. You didn't see this, but Melissa Appel, head of sports, she ran up here, she grabbed my score sheet, she ran back down. I mean, they're, they're all over this. So, well, you know, they're, they're, they are tight-lipped in this camp. There are, there are literally, like, three people that actually know the score right now. And, I mean, I'm happy we don't know the score. It would definitely affect uh, our, our excitement and our interest in, you know, kind of following through with what's going on. And, obviously, the kids... You know, there are other other locations that I've seen that, that, that kind of broadcast the score throughout. And, like, it's a, a running running count. Right, right. And, you know, that, 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 could, that could take away from some of the excitement. I think that there's there's a different energy. It's, like, more palpable because right. there's, like, that unknown right now. And they're constantly coming up to the staff saying, do you know who's in the lead? Who's winning? Do you know like, like they think we know. know. Like, right. <laughs> we know. Speaking of the score, I would liken um, Rabbi Wieneker's position here as scorekeeper here to... Uh, He's like, he's like the guy who blows shofar in the shul, sits in the back of the shul the whole year, doesn't really do anything, but then Kamrav Shana, everyone's like, he's our guy, we're all depending on him right now. 364 days a year, you might not hear from that guy, but then when it's his day, he's the most important guy in town. From what I understand, the, the, the algorithm that he has for the scoring is so complex that he probably could have built some like investment tool to like make millions of dollars, but he really focused it on color war scoring I, I, I heard that he turns them offers from Bloomberg all the time with the algorithm. I, I believe it. I, believe I just it. hope he doesn't pull uh, who was that? Steve Harvey on the Miss America pageant? Oh, announced the wrong person. That would be so bad. Yeah. I couldn't, I when that, that happened, I couldn't believe what was happening. Yeah, I obviously wasn't there because I don't watch Miss America page, pageant, but I was cracking You want to hear an interesting stat? My grandmother's sister was the only Jewish Miss America ever. Is that true? Yes. Wow. Bess Myerson, 1945. 1945. Only Jewish the Miss America one ever? One and only Jewish Miss America. Folks, you we can get, send We got someone to, look to it up. Back, back, look it up. Back, 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 back. Yeah, I'm going to say that a lot of the stats that I've been throwing out are total lies, so we're going to have to check that this one. She's not a lie. <laughs> she's my grandmother's sister. She's not alive anymore. I'm just but so. listen, and to have a Jewish Miss America the year, uh, the, the year that World War II ended was a huge thing. They wanted her to change her name. Bess was too Jewish. I don't know. Bess is not so Jewish anymore. Maybe that's no. where you that's get your comfort Jewish. on the stage from. What? Maybe that's where you get your comfort on the stage from. 
I know. Listen, if they never mind, I'm not even good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we were about we were about to get something really good, and then uh, Sam, that let me out. I was just gonna let suggest some kind of pageant here, <laughs> but uh, you know, I don't pageant know. Pageant here. We had um, one. We had the Brujos Me pageant. I think if Brujos Me pageant. <laughs> Is she your pageant? I'm just saying, if someone were to tell Jeremy after this that between the three of us, one of us suggested a motor shop duty pageant, I don't think he would have guessed you would be the one to suggest it. Listen, I can't help it. It's 99 degrees up here. All I'm thinking about is swimming in a lake. <laughs> That's why I brought... Remember last time, everybody who watched the broadcast with Ari and me will remember there was a moment where we didn't know we were on camera and we're mopping our brows. So, so folks, if you see my hair blowing in the wind, I brought my tornado. <laughs> see? That's a Smart. Honeywell, by the way. What? That's a Honeywell. They're our corporate so, sponsors. Oh, it's a Honeywell. So, to, 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 the more, to the more seasoned Morasha Color War, you know, uh, people here. What, what's the process now? Where, where are we up to down on the floor? They just dance. It's a sea of blue and yellow. Are they are they tallying the final yes. numbers yeah. and That's then they're, they're gonna doing. interesting? Yeah, and they're gonna announce some of the uh, individual scores for some of the individual projects. Uh, you know, like people work three days on a bench and they want to find out like who won. Interesting. Right. Yeah, well, look, I, I, I happen to know who won the chop competition. That's the one thing I actually know about Color War. Oh, yeah? Was it the team that made the dish that you finished? I would imagine. It was It was the team that made the dish. Well, they were Again, both well, the wait, same. Let me be fair. I only know the way I scored it. I don't know the way the other Georges scored it. Oh, so you don't know who won? I have no idea. I know who won on my page. Ah, okay. I only, you know, what was the dish? The dish, the, well, one, they were both egg. They were, it was the breakfast of champions. So one was a avocado toast that had a cut out of the bread with the egg cooked into it with an avocado toast and some sriracha. It's actually really delicious. And the other one was an omelet, um, a tomato onion omelet. And they both were managed to make pancakes and a cupcake without any baking powder, which is pretty impressive. Was that a special challenge, or did you run no, out one, of baking one, powder? Some of the, the, no, it wasn't in the pantry. It wasn't in, oh, They had the same ingredients. They, all, they both had the same wow. ingredients, and it wasn't in the pantry. And they were, were you allowed to bring like a, a, an ingredient with you? Like in, in Chop, like or you get like a wild card. Was I allowed to? Or no, were they. No, they were. I was thinking about bringing an extra ingredient in the middle and like throwing it in and be like bonus points if you guys can. Oh, they that. never do that in Chop. Did you give them? You give them Did a little. That? Uh, that was that was maybe that was an original thought, but I didn't want to step on Lawrence toes on that. When you were when you were reviewing, did you give them a, like a little bit Gordon Ramsay? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm rough on them. I also walk around, make pretend I'm writing things. I don't think that's going to make them nervous, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, so you stir it that way? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, like I walk around like. No, like, like, kind of eyeball something and like make a note. I'm not actually writing anything. I don't even know if the pen is, is open. It's not really relevant. It's just to kind of change their vibe. <laughs> you could be pretty scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember we used to do that like during evaluations for leagues when we were counselors. We would we would we would hold clipboards and like when the kid some kid like threw the ball over the back of the backboard. Like we'd walk up to him, like, what's your name? What's your name? Okay. <laughs> That list went nowhere. It's going on its permanent record. <laughs> Donnie, speaking of being scary and being in the kitchen, can you give us a little uh, glimpse into what to expect from Banquet tomorrow night? For Banquet, we're actually going with uh, an international theme. So we're going to have different stations throughout the... the we're going to utilize the staff dining room for buffets, and we're going to have different different countries represented. You know, basically the food that everyone likes. But, uh, you know, a little About Japan. Time. We'll do some poke bowls for Japan. Cool. We'll have a Chinese station. We'll do chicken lo mein, beef and broccoli, egg rolls. Any Middle Eastern food? There is Middle Eastern food as well. We're going to have lakmajin. Lakmajin. Kibbeh? Uh, no kibbeh because I couldn't get it seed free. No seed free And, and I definitely can't make kibbeh from on my own. Yeah, haram. <laughs> no, no yebra. <laughs> and uh, we, we also have cigars. Moroccan cigars? Moroccan cigars. Uh, and barekas. Uh, not, no chillin. <laughs> <laughs> Too international. No, no, no chillin. Too Eastern European. What do you have, do you have from Canada? Um, Canada will not be represented in this year's banquet. Um, but what, what do you have from Canada? No, what I was would wondering, you like to see? I, I was, I, I've never heard of anyone being like, we're going to this great Canadian place tonight. So I was wondering what one does for international food. It's, it's like we're going to this great British place. Uh, no such thing. How about a goose? A goose? Your goose is cooked. Canadian goose? It's not like a food they're known for. If anything like maybe maple syrup, something like. Ooh. French fries. Oh, poutine! Sauce? It's called poutine. French fries and sauce is called poutine. That's Canadian. They have like restaurants. That's not Canadian French fries. It's 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 Montreal, Montreal. Montreal, French. Very Montreal. Uh, 
But poutine is very, very uh, Montreal Canadian. We should get Miriam Cohen up here. Yes. Shout out, shout out to my friend Miriam Cohen, Miriam Cohen is, who has is, been with me every. She's she's Canadian from Montreal. Well, she's been with me every morning, 5:45 for our workout. So we have Miriam Cohen yeah. has been here since 1999. She's one of one of the oldest running uh, staff members here. She also runs Literally. with you. But approximately 12 miles a day. Yeah. And that doesn't day. include the work she puts in in the... In the, in the what? In the you guys do 12 system. miles a day? Pretty much. It's pretty impressive. Wow. It's I, pretty I, impressive. I, I have my personal record this past Shabbat. We walked. We walked. We don't run on Shabbat. 17 miles. Whoa. Yeah. I once walked for 17 minutes. <laughs> True story. I thought about that once also. <laughs> I thought about it. Yeah. You we're thought about it. Walking for 17 minutes. Right. Yes. Decided against. <laughs> but it was. Uh, we're going to miss these roads. We're going to miss these these kids. We're going to miss the, the nature. We're going to miss the lakefront. Every every bunk is a lakefront bunk over here. I mean, it's, it's an incredible thing. We say we're going to miss it. We're going to look forward to it next year. True. True. As Like Melissa, she starts working on next summer already exactly. from now. Well, that's what, that's what I say about the kitchen. You know, they, they, they you know, every day. We have to prepare, not every day, but most days of the week, we have to prepare something for Shabbos. So it's kind of like, right. you know, it's kind Donnie, of like I have the, to the say, week revolves around Shabbos. Donnie, I have to say, like, every when I come up here for the day or whatever, people are always like, oh, so you're stopping at Woodburn to get Dougie's? I'm like, no, I'm going to Morisha. Right. Morisha, have you, have you been to the Morisha dining room? Like, why would I stop at Dougie's? I got a salad bar. Sure. I got gourmet food. Totally true. My, my, when Danny went home for a day, his parents said, Come over, at least you'll have a good home cooked meal. And Danny said, What do you mean? I don't need a home cooked meal. I want to go back to camp. <laughs> Thanks oh, for the kind Shabbos words. Day is still my favorite. <laughs> yeah, well, Shabbos Day, is, uh, there's no the shortage meat. of items. Are you still doing the meat pizzas? We, 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 got, we did meat pizzas. Uh, we did meat uh, pretzel bun sliders, uh, the pulled beef. And, and, wow. we, and that Shabbos, we actually did it in the deli roll, which is pretty good also. But yeah, there's there's pull brisket every Shabbos. Tell me about this morning. Something happened in the in the dining room this morning. I walked through the dining room to go get the, my berries that I usually get, and I see marshmallows and whipped cream. And what was going on there? So, so you guys know the trend on Instagram where it's like, tell me it's this without telling me it's this. Have you seen that at all? No, absolutely no. not. So, so so basically, when the last week of camp comes, we got to use what we got. So <laughs> so so when I saw the weather this morning. And I saw that I have a bunch of milk and a bunch of hot cocoa mix and a bunch of mini marshmallows. Hot cocoa came out came out to play. I like that. And, 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 and it went a over really well. Of your own. So it gives me an opportunity to use up some product that we have. And it was also kind of something special for the kids. And it was really nice. It felt like uh, last morning of camp, but it wasn't the last morning right. of camp. <laughs> so that's why I said, I said, tell me it's the last week of camp without telling me it's the last week of right, camp. Right, right. <laughs> Kudos. Yeah. That was really good. But it's definitely, definitely, we, we have a good time. And, 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 you know, I'm definitely blessed with the really talented, hardworking staff. And, and it's also, look, it's a blessing to work in a place like Mora Shah, who, who makes it a real focus. And it's a huge kudos to Shem, the way they take care of my international staff. And, and, and you know, I mean, they, they give it the back to us with hard work because, you know, they're, they're, they're really awesome. And it's a really great place to work. So. They are amazing. Let's go, go to, the, to listen a little bit to the singing on the floor. But, Tia, can we hear that? Let's go. Ayanu b'nei Morasha, Yerusha teinu hi haTorah. Hay b'nachel neilech kol yameinu unei kaiyim mitzvosecha from the top. Yeah, 
Really tough to say. A lot of the stuff, the banners were so tight. The bench, it was. It was they were. They were I think they were it's going to so come great. down to the the day to day sports and the. Well, well how does it work? It, 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 are the scoring for for you know how how is it? I mean, there's, I know I know Roy huge, Wienicker knows. There's a huge point gift that goes to the overall winner of sports. That's like one of the biggest things you can win in Color War. Okay. Then there's the uh, where they memorize the Brafos. Do they still do this, that thing? The Brafos B. I guess. The Brafos That's the other big one. The Brooklyn's Bee pageant. The Brooklyn's Bee pageant. Um, Swimsuit pageant. Well, everything else, like it, it adds up. Interesting. It really I, I, does. But, but are, are, are like the banners worth more, or Shiria worth more, or is um, yeah, I think like the banners are worth more than let's say the the ceiling tiles for sure. There is like a it, it does correspond to level of. So yeah, I don't know. It's it's really tight. I mean, I I, I got to see you know a bunch of things that Patchy raised and and yeah. like. It's just, it's just tough to say. It looks, it looks really evenly matched. Uh, you know. But if, if I can remind everybody at home that if you were watching Shiria, the girls won by 10 points. So, you know, Tight. it could come What? Be they, really day close. camp didn't win this year? I mean, after day camp. They oh, camp okay, dom dominated. Are there any Rubens in day camp? Yes, a team Ruben. Okay, we're going to cut to Jeremy. Let's listen to some scores. Younger Sheely girls for the blue off team 
And the last channel from the FI Yellow Team, from Nisi Gold, let's hear it for Ellie Noah Kruger!
Bucks might be at a 450 also. Team up 220. Team up 220. Oh, Camp Project. Camp Project. Team up. 145. Team up 150. The Shellet. The Shellet. 9.5 on my fall off the top. All right, Jason David, how you doing? Theme song, are you ready? Jason David, all right, theme song, team up. 214, team at on. 236. Wait, oh, wait, just wait. Alma Mater. Oh, there's some nudnik near me wants to know about the lift up video. We'll talk later, buddy. Okay, Alma Mater, team up. 213. Echon. One second, Jason. I want to know who has anybody in this room added up the first two days of sports? Who did it? Who did it? Admit it. You did it? I didn't think so either. Let's go, all sports. Team up. 33, 35. Team at on. Oh, it is exciting. All right, you can. All right, 40, 30, 30. Powerful delivery by Rabbi Louis Wieneker. Seriously, Team Echad Yellow takes the night by storm. Sports and Sharia, they really, uh, they really soared. Yeah. They really soared. It's nice to see the kids dancing together, though. You know, being happy for their friends. And, uh, you know, hoping for the best next year for the blue team and, and congratulating the yellow team. Yep, look at all that blue and yellow, blue and yellow together. And now we face the last couple nights of camp. And uh, good luck, guys. I'm heading out. <laughs> Dovi, it was it was great it's to have you. I, I was say, I was telling I forgot what I was telling at dinner, but like the last two days of camp are worth like like thousands of dollars in salary. Like if you could take a job and not have the last two and first the job with the last two that's like thousands of dollars it's true because nobody goes it's, to sleep yeah. it's the just worst. a rolling De definitely the most stressful time in my department also you want you don't want to have too much you want to have enough you know it's, it's a definitely uh, and then you have leftover you gotta throw out like right. <laughs> for real i'm happy to say that the show was last week and i am happily somewhat on vacation before we go did want to thank some of our shout outers 
in the uh, in the YouTube channel. Um, I've been told that Heshi and Bonnie shirts have been giving it a lot of love. Um, you would think they're my parents. They're not, though. <laughs> I don't. I don't think my parents know about this, but uh, I appreciate that. I want to send a special shout out to Judy Dibbert, Judy and Seth Dibbert, who left a couple days early, but they've been here this summer. Judy on woodworking and Seth teching the productions in the theater. We love you guys. We're so happy to have your family in Camp Arasha, and we can't wait to have you back next summer. And, and I, I just want to thank you guys for having me, and I want to thank Ari for letting me fill in for him. He couldn't be here tonight either. Yeah, sorry. And, we miss you. Yeah, we miss you, Ari, and, and thanks again. It was really, really a lot of fun. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Good night, good night. Good night.